On today's show, the Sacramento Kings get the best of the Golden State Warriors. How did it come down to the wire? Who got the best of who? And the Eastern Conference, Western Conference All-Star starters were announced. Were there snubs? Wes Unseld was snubbed from the Wizards job. We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On NBA your first listen today. Well, the best way you can help us grow this show is to listen every day, leave a five star review, like the video, comment anything below. Let us know if there's any snubs for the for the East West All Star starters. I, do we do snubs for starters? I guess we should. Doing, I guess we're doing that today. Uh, and I'm joining on a Friday. Adam Mares, DNVR, Locked On Nuggets. What you got for me, Adam? Dude, just like old times. Me and Angstat back oh, together running the Friday yeah. two-man game. Feels good. Power rankings. We got power rankings we on deck. Power rankings. NBA Karens. This is, oh. this is a chance this goes down as the greatest Friday Locked On NBA power rankings of all time. Wow. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed to yeah. be here. Blessed to be here. We'll talk about Wes Unsell getting fired from the Wizards. What do they do next? What? What should they do next? <laughs> it's kind of where the, where the Wizards are at times. We'll talk about the All-Star starters, but I want to start, Adam, with Warriors versus Kings. It's NBA Rivalry Week. Yeah. Not for everybody. Not yeah. every game. Not every <laughs> well, game is a rivalry. You don't look at some of these games and go, you know what? The uh, the Nuggets and the Ki- and the, the Knicks. Right. Big time yeah. rivalry. You don't look at that. But Mellow trade, I guess, maybe. Well, you can look at that. That's true. The Kings Warriors come down to the wire. 134 to 133. The Kings get the win in this one. Harrison Barnes with his career high as someone that covers the Dallas Mavericks. And he was the number one option there for two years. I was surprised he had never scored more than 34 points for the Mavericks, but Harrison Barnes with 39 in this one, he come, he, you know, they get the win warriors come up short on the Kings side of things. How did the Kings get this done? Well, I mean, you mentioned it, Harrison Barnes, career high, 39 points, and really so much in the clutch too. They went to him down the stretch in some of the key moments uh, and he delivered all but the very, very end. And I got to be honest with you, Nick. This is, I, I I feel like the Warriors are done. And I know that doesn't feel like a hot take. They're 19 and 23. <laughs> but tonight I was sitting watching with my wife and I told her, I said, this always happens to the Kings. Game seven, last second, whatever it is, Steph just hits a dagger and they always get him. And tonight Steph gets the ball down one as the clock's ticking and you see him get to that left wing a spot he has hit many a game winner and i just knew he was gonna hit one but he dribbled it off his foot and the kings got the victory and it just felt like metaphor yeah that that that's it's it's over it feels like it although we are already going to the warrior side (laughs) but on their on their side like the Jonathan Kuminga experience, he was yeah. I thought great in this game. Would have finished with 31 points. This one had some clutch buckets, did have that uh what was a missed shot at the end. And you just look at man, like what is Steve Kerbin thinking not using this guy as much? Right. Because it looks like he should be they've been waiting on their their next iteration of this team was supposed to have the James Wiseman, Kuminga, Moody, at least one or two of those guys was supposed to take them into this next phase. And it looks like Kuminga is going into that, but Man, father time comes for us all. And Steph Curry's still amazing. He's still going to be an all-star. Wasn't a starter. We'll talk about that. But, man. He was good tonight. I mean, he had a lot of good – he's 6 of 14, 13 of 26. Like, he was good. It just was the moment the stage was set. When they missed the free throw – so Sacramento gets two free throws in the closing seconds. Misses both. That's Mm. just a bad omen. It's like, okay, you had a chance to put this game away, and you didn't. And here comes Steph Curry, the scariest man in the NBA in in that moment. And then, yeah, he just didn't get it done, dribbled it off his leg. It felt like there was that weird, like, contrived Steph versus Sabrina Inescu uh, three-point right, right. shootout that came out of nowhere that was like yeah. uh, Steph was, like, you know, organically talking about it before the game, <laughs> mic'd right. up. I was like, hey, we should do this. And then it's already set up right, afterwards. Right. But, yeah, it, it does It does feel like this Warriors team is done. Like, they, they yeah. get beat by this team and the Kings, who are not – as good as they were last year, but still very good. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what's next for the for the Warriors. Like, where do they, where do they turn to? Like, is a Wiggins trade to get somebody better than Wiggins? Like, does that even take them to another level? It just doesn't seem like there's a move to be made, right? 
I mean, you know, the whole thing was you got Draymond back. They obviously had a tragedy uh, last, you know, earlier in the week. Yeah, huge. And so you have all this going on where it just feels like, for me at least, it feels like a reset of sorts to say, okay, let's stabilize. And tonight was just one of those games where it felt like they had a real chance to win and real, real chance to pull it out, and they came up short. And the road doesn't get easier. You know, you got the Lakers coming up. You got Philadelphia right after that. So you have some tough games before um, – you know, I don't know if it's going to get easier on the immediate horizon. So, um, so I don't know. You are right, though, that we do this a lot where we'll talk about because the Warriors being done and losing in this heartbreaking fashion and falling to 1923 when every game is so important for them now. It's a big story. But there is the other side of this, which is that Sacramento getting a win in Golden State for the first time since 2020 um, and, and getting 22 three pointers to do it. Um, it's, it's, it's really big for them as much as it is a big story for the Warriors. It's big for the Kings. Feels like they're coming up with some ways, like other ways to win games where last year it was a lot of down mm. in the clutch, you know, clutch player of the year, like Darren Fox would bail him out. And I've seen a couple times this season where it's been somebody else that's bailed him out. We had yeah. that crazy Malik Monk game. Sabonis has been great at times. Keegan Murray's had good game. It feels like they're getting more options and more guys contributing. I think Mike Brown's done a good job building that culture there where it's, a, you know, different guys contributing at different times. You know, sometimes Malik Monk plays a ton of minutes tonight. He only right. played 19. You got Darren Fox. Sometimes he closes the game and today he only had 16 shots, which doesn't seem a lot, but you know, uh, you know, it's a decent amount of shots, not a lot of shots for a number one option on a team basically. Right. And they're okay with Harrison Barnes taking that step forward. It feels like they're coming up with different, different versions of this team, which is, is nice, especially when you're going into a playoff setting. No question. It, it's nice to get a big performance from a guy like that. Let me ask you, because they made 22 threes tonight, and it was the sixth time this year that they have made 20 or more three-pointers. Of all the teams in the NBA, where does Sacramento rank among teams that you feel are most explosive? from? Like If I said most explosive from the three-point line, who comes to mind for you? Which teams? Well, I'd have to say the Celtics because they went nuts <laughs> in their game. In their game. Uh, they lead, not, by the way, they are number one, I believe. No, they are not. No, they are not number one in 23-point games. I would put the Mavericks somewhere up there, not not like one, two, or three, but like up there. They have like the, six games with 23, so Sacramento tied them tonight for second most. The Clippers are probably up there too. They're, they're explosive, but not necessarily from three. They just have the mm. one game with those from three. The other one's Milwaukee, who obviously yeah. shoots a ton. And then number one is Indiana with right. seven games. And so I think that's the list. Boston, Sacramento, Dallas, Milwaukee, Indiana. Those are the teams I think of where just on any given night, you might run into a team that goes 22 of 48, as Sacramento did tonight. And you need a hero, you know. It's heroic of Golden State that they were in this game despite giving up 22 three-pointers. They made 19 themselves, but 22 three-pointers is just rare air. And it's wild for a Warriors team. Like This is why we say that it seems like that's, this version of the Warriors team right. is done. They, 19 of 37, 51% from three, and they can't get a win just because their right. defense can't play at the level at all and not not the level like the, the function of defense, but like right. they can't play to a level to get them to to win. They have the 22nd ranked defense, and we're used to these Warriors teams being able to go to a different gear. And I'm seeing this with the Mavericks, and we're seeing this with some other teams. Like, these small ball lineups aren't working as as well as they used to. You can't just throw out a bunch of wings, and then it spreads, it spreads the floor out, and it's this new concept. Like, every team does that basically all the time, it seems like. It's true. I mean, there's very few teams that, that break that mold of, of, of three-point shooting, and it's wild. 24 teams in the NBA have made 20, at least 23 pointers in a game. 24. Wow. There's only six teams who haven't done it so far. That's pretty wild. I think if you we rewound, I'd be curious to see in like 2015, how many teams even had a single game of 23 pointers made. I can look it up here very quickly, but I'll bet you it's not very many. I was going back and uh, I was doing a project for a different YouTube channel and I was looking at the, the 20, uh, it was the 2011 playoffs. And I was like, it was a Lakers Mavs series where the, the Mavs swept the Lakers in that. Yeah. And you go back and it's like Andrew Bynum and Pau Gasol at the, at the four and the five. Right. Right. And then the Mavs are like taking all these threes. They're like, Oh, taking all these threes. And they're like seven of, they're like seven yeah. of 17 or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, something, real, like it's, just, it's just not that many at all, but it's, it felt like a lot. And that felt like it, the change of where your four has to be able to shoot threes and everybody right. has to. And now it's, your teams are just taking so many of them, but so yeah. I have this, hold on, because you'll find it interesting. So this is 2016. It's not that long ago. The Warriors had already had one championship run, right? They had that year seven games with 20 or more threes. 
the Clippers had one, the Lob City Clippers, and the Charlotte Hornets had one. That's the end of the list. <laughs> now we're halfway through, and 24 teams have at least one game, with several of them having at least five games. So it, it sometimes I know we all think, okay, they shoot more threes, but the rate at which everybody shoots and makes, more importantly, they make the threes at this crazy rate, it's it really is absurd. You got to move it back. You got to move it back. Take away, <laughs> take away the corners. Move it back. You, Maybe. Uh, hey, we'll we'll see what they do. But yeah, good win. Great win for the the Kings in rivalry week coming up. Let's talk about the All Star starters. Who was snubbed? Who got it? Who made history? We'll talk about that and more, and then talk about Wes Unseld coming up. Today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. eBay Motors teaming up with the GOAT of fantasy basketball. That's Josh Lloyd, Locked On Fantasy Basketball, to give you the eBay's guaranteed picks, uh, fantasy picks of the week. They're the best fit for your teams. Got a couple here. Uh, got a couple that would be interesting. John Conchar of the Grizzlies. Grizzlies are just, you never know who's playing for the Grizzlies on any given night, it feels like. John I like Conchar. Conchar. For the Grizzlies, according to Josh Lloyd, the Grizzlies rotations are up in the air, but Conchar is getting minutes and producing at the moment that he is uh, that is useful for the Grizzlies. So if you're interested in some some extra production, John Conchar could be there for your team. He also mentions Brandon Miller, Jabari Walker, Patrick Williams, Nick Richards of the, the Hornets. A couple interesting guys there that could give you some stuff at the end of your, your bench. Just like Josh Lloyd from Lockdown Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. We've all got cars. A lot of us have got cars. None of us live in walkable cities anymore. You've got to take care of your car. 122 million parts to choose from on eBay Motors. You can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly with brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs. eBay Motors has it covered. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers eligible items only exclusions apply. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us on Locked On NBA, being part of this show, being in every day or listening every day. We have a daily Locked On show that covers your team. Check the link in the description to find the show that covers your team every day. We also have a 24 seven stream. If you just love sports talk, if you just love Bunch of people talking sports, different sports, specific teams, non-specific teams, 24-7 streaming on Locked On Sports Today. You can also find it on Firestick TV, Locked On Sports Today, the YouTube channel. All right, Adam, let's talk about the All-Stars. We got it announced who made the All-Star starters. It's a combination of the fan vote, the media vote, and the player vote. For the East, Giannis, captain. This is his eighth time being an all-star Joel Embiid, seventh time being an all-star Jason Tatum, fifth time Tyrese Halliburton makes it the second time, first time as a starter, and Damian Lillard on the East. Let's stay with the East here. Damian Lillard gets it over Jalen Brunson. They're apparently tied in all the categories, but they used fan vote. Whoever got the most fan votes mm. as the tiebreaker. Lillard got more fan votes. Are you considering Brunson a snub here? Yes. Yes, he's a snub. Look, Lillard's a great player. He's had a great career. And this is the first time he's been a starter, right? So it's kind of a big accolade for him. To, I, I believe he's always been out in the Western Conference. I don't believe he started one, which is kind of crazy. But Jalen Brunson, to me, has done everything that he has done and more without the help of a Giannis by his side. He has been in phenomenal. To me, he is more cl closer to an MVP candidate than like a fringe all-star starter. He has been absolutely incredible. Lillard's having a little bit of a down year shooting the ball and has had some ups and downs. I just, to me, this would be an easy call. Now I get it. Look, the fan vote and everything else, but I get why it worked out that way. I'm not saying to change the rules, but if you're asking who deserved it, Jalen Brunson clearly deserves it over Damian Lillard. Yeah. And it, it, I, I always try to give credit to a player that's kind of doing it by himself that doesn't have another guy next to him. And, you know, like, I guess right. that's Julius Randle erasure. He's made two All NBA teams. Is but it? Uh, I don't know. Is it? <laughs> he's made two All NBA teams. Okay. That still that right. blows my mind every time I think about the it. The East was really down for a while there, but. <laughs> but he doesn't have Gian he doesn't have Giannis, right? And so, I mean, if you look at it that way, I I, I don't know. It's hard for me to get really wrapped up in in some of these, but well, same. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care, <laughs> but I but I if you ask me if he deserved it over Damian Lillard, he definitely deserved it. The media had. Halliburton number one as far as East guards. Then he, then they had Brunson. Then they had Mitchell. Then they had Tyrese Maxey. Then they wow. had Damian Lillard. And Damian Lillard ranked fourth among players as well. Tyrese Halliburton was first among players. Then it was Tyrese Maxey. Maxey yeah. And then it was uh, Jalen Brunson. And then it was Lillard. So it is weird that Lillard gets it over 
over Brunson when he was fourth in player and fifth in, in fifth in media. The fan vote me, takes yeah. it over the edge. Let me just give a a minute here on Jalen Brunson because he has really been phenomenal all year. That Knicks team is scary yeah. good right now and just sort of the, how they have an identity, the way they defend, the intensity they play with. But he is, you know, I always love when a player embodies what a team's about. And I feel like Jalen Brunson is a true captain of that team. Mm. And he's tough. He's smart. He's disciplined. He's consistent. He brings it every night. And tonight against Denver, they win by 38 points over the reigning champ Denver Nuggets. He goes for 21 points on 7 of 10 shooting. Just just 7 of 10. Nice, efficient, effective play from him. He's he's a beast. And I've seen some metrics where he takes the hardest shots in the NBA. It's true. Like, he takes super, super hard shots. And he learned how to play this non-rhythmic game playing next right. to Luka, where he would only get the ball every once in a while, and then he had to make his shots when it counted, and you have to be really efficient because Luka's going to look at you, and he's, you know, yeah. he's only going to get the ball at certain times. And, man, he's just really taking the, taking the next level. It's, it's wild to think that, like, about three years ago, he got played off the floor in a playoff setting, and now we're talking about him like, oh, he got snubbed for an all-star starter. Just amazing what he's done. Yeah. On the West side, LeBron James, captain of the West, his 20th time on an all-star team. That's the most in NBA history. He passes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kevin Durant, he makes it 14th time. Jokic, sixth time. Luka, fifth time. And Shea Gilgis alexander his second time as well. Feels like that's the list, but it's weird not having Steph on the list. It is a little weird not having him, although to be honest, before you tell you said that I hadn't really thought of it today. So it, it kind of goes to show you that maybe just mentally, you know, I'm I'm almost I have almost moved on. But I think it's the right list. Tell me if you agree. I think Kevin Durant and Luka Doncic are the two man and LeBron James. You could make cases there. Um, you know, LeBron obviously the popular. I think he's the guy you definitely would take off of this. But even Kevin Durant and Luka Doncic, I just Kawhi Leonard to me. If you're asking snubs, mm, yeah, he has been unbelievable all. He's played all year and he's been unbelievable in the back half of the season so far. And I just think he's a guy that I don't know who you take over. It's probably LeBron, but he definitely belongs on this team. Yeah, uh, LeBron, Jokic, and Kevin Durant went one, two, and three in whatever order in player, fan, and media rank for this. And then Kawhi got fourth in player rank and in media rank, but he was sixth in in fan. So he actually are, are you surprised by that? By the that the players put him late like that? No, because I think there's a respect there of the multiple like finals MVP. Like you know, there's no. I'm saying with LeBron, like I don't Kawhi to me right now seems like a bigger, badder, scarier dude. Mm -hmm. than LeBron or KD. And it's not that those guys aren't big and bad. It's just that Kawhi to me is a bit of a, like he's on a tear, his team is on a tear, and he looks as good as a two-way player as anybody in the league over the last month and a half. It feels like LeBron is uh, Chuck Norris and Expendables, where it's just like the respect <laughs> is there. He's not on okay. the level of any of these other guys probably, but like mm -hmm. he's still the name. Like there, we made the Chuck Norris jokes in middle school, and like he's just always going to get the vote uh -oh. at this point. Is Chuck Norris in Expendables? He is. He's in one of them, right? I to be this, I would not know. I know the reference, but I would not be able to tell you. <laughs> I, don't think gonna, I've, I don't think I've seen a single one of those movies, but I saw all the trailers. That's but you know I mean. the trailer for sure. And do, I saw you, them too. do you do this thing? Do you get into the deep dive? Because the NBA communications department, they share the full votes. So you can see yeah. actually exactly who voted for what. Do you do you ever take a peek at that? Only for Mavs reasons when I look to see who was mean <laughs> to Luca. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, you know, players can complain about fan vote or media sometimes this or that. But if you look, man, they do not take their role in the all-star voting seriously at all. <laughs> Every player in the NBA has a vote. So Thanasis somebody got, got three votes. Everybody. Thanasis Antetokounmpo, <laughs> maybe the worst player since the you know wow. 1930s. Uh, he gets votes. And so it's always just kind of funny to me when you go through it and come through it and you go, huh. But at the top, you do get a sense of who do the players – respect and this or that and for me Jokic was a guy that between from last year to this year winning a championship does wonders for how you are viewed yeah. um, it was very neat to see him go number one overall in the player vote in the Western Conference I thought that was very neat yeah he's the guy he's he's the number one uh for them and for <laughs> he and was for the last guy picked though last year Nick don't you remember the draft <laughs> He had to pick himself. LeBron didn't want it. He was going to take Sabotis. Nobody wanted him. Now he's the number one well, guy amongst the player vote. You know what's in question is if he really loves basketball or not. That's what's in <laughs> <laughs> he does not love the all-star game. Not that, that part is not in question. That's what's in question. Does he love it more or less than Jimmy Butler does? 
<laughs> <laughs> well, if you remember, I was thinking too, Shea Gildas Alexander also, if you remember last year, put zero effort into the All-Star game. And then afterwards said, yeah, if they pay us, we'll care. So, or money talks. So I was kind of curious to see, like, this might be the least enthusiastic All-Star game <laughs> we've ever seen based on the uh, starters. Uh, Luca does not care about the, the All-Star game that much either. Uh, but Jokic, so. Luca, and Shea, man, they are, oof. And Bede will probably go off for like 60. and <laughs> He's got to win something else. Uh, all right. Coming up, let's talk quickly about Wes Unseld and the Wizards, and then we'll get into yeah. the power rankings, the NBA Karens. I'm excited. Talk about that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Grammarly. Do you have Grammarly as a browser extension? Because I have to have it on every browser, on every computer, on every thing that I ever use because I just make too many typos. I move too fast and I've got to have something that backs me up that has the uh, the typos ready to be checked, the use of semicolons corrected, the missing commas here and there. I've, I've got to have the Oxford comma. I've got to know exactly what it is. Grammarly has helped me. It helped me all through college as well. If I had a paper, if I was writing a paper, you write it in a Word document. Sometimes word spell check is not like the most intuitive grammarly it's got the app you copy and paste it in there it tells you all the different stuff it'll tell you insights on it so go to grammarly.com slash podcast to download it for free start being more productive at work g-r-a-m-m-a-r-l-y.com slash podcast to go get grammarly you've got a big presentation coming up grammarly will create a personalized outline to get you organized sometimes you just can't get started and grammarly can help you get started again grammarly.com slash podcast to download for free Grammarly.com slash podcast. All right, Adam, let's talk about the Washington Wizards. They let go of Wes Unseld. And uh, I thought it was going to be the start of the dominoes for the, for the coaches being gone. Like Adrian Griffin goes and all of a sudden the Wizards like, hey, man, we got it. We wanted to do this, too. Thoughts on Wes Unseld being ousted as the Wizards coach? Well, it's a weird scenario, right? Because he wasn't quite ousted. He was reassigned. True. He, true. he was repositioned. He, did, he now moves to the he front did the office. Dwayne Casey. But it, and which is, by the way, a move we kind of see more, more and more often, as you mentioned. But it is also a, a strange move just in that, you know, what are the Wizards doing? He has really struggled as a head coach since being there. It's three, two and a half losing seasons. Obviously, this will, will be a losing season eventually. Two and a half losing seasons, and then to say, okay, yeah, but rather than coach, we're just going to move you to a front office, a role he has not, you know, he's been a coach for the last several years. It just yeah. seems, it seems strange to me. Like we saw Brad Stevens move to the front office, successful coach, his time has run his course, whatever. But I just thought with Wes Unseld, the Wizards seem a little rudder, rudderless. Where are they going? It seems a little bit strange to me, but again, I'm not close enough to the situation to really know. I just thought it was odd. Yeah, I was talking to Brandon Scott from Lockdown Wizards today just about what his thoughts are, what he thought about this. And he was like, you know, there's one side of it where his lineups weren't great, his rotations weren't great. It didn't seem like he, you know, <laughs> they were bought in on defense and everything. It's like, well, I don't know that any of those players are going to be bought in on defense. But he said, you know what? He also wasn't set up to succeed in any way with, with this Wizards team, with any of these players or or any of that. Like, he doesn't, doesn't seem to have a number, number one option. Doesn't seem like they have an identity as a roster. Like, if you just look at them on paper, if anyone tried to play with them in 2K, like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you trying to do with this Wizards team? So, it does seem like that. Uh, yeah, that that thing on the side shouldn't say fired. It should say reassigned because that is what they did. And it it's weird in some of these instances where, like, his dad is a legend in that organization. Right. And this is... Yeah, that's this is why I never want Dirk to be in any like official capacity with the Mavericks that is like front facing, like a GM or something like that. Cause like, I don't want to start blaming Dirk for things. You know, right, right. this is a little yeah. different cause it's his <laughs> totally. son, but like there is some, some of that organizational like respect where, Hey, we don't want to just like fire a legend of our organization's right. son. And they don't have a ton of legends over there. Is, is a GM above a coach though in your mind? The GM can fire the coach, right? So this is why it's a little weird. Like, Adam, I'm not liking the work you're doing on Locked On Nuggets, so we're going to reassign you to my boss. Going to make you my boss now. <laughs> like, that's kind of how it feels. Like We're taking you off the coach and making you the coach's boss. Well, Brad Stevens kind of did that too, right? Well, he did it to himself, which is very, <laughs> a brilliant move of his. Uh, there you go. You can go listen to Lockdown Wizards for more thoughts on, on that. They've got – we'll figure out who the next coach is and how the interim coach is going to do and all that. But for now – it's time to look into the complainers, the whiners, the throwing them out, the the let me talk to the managerist players in the NBA. It's power rankings. I'm not a system player. I am a system player. Go, go, power rankings. It's incredible. It's 
be going every time. Oh, it is Friday, Nick. You know we like to power rank things on a Friday to send us off into the weekend. And we're not ranking NBA Karens. We're ranking NBA Karen moments in recent mm. NBA history because yeah. earlier this week, in fact, it was yesterday, Luka Doncic, after blowing a huge first quarter lead, I mean, he was dominant in the first quarter, making fools of the Phoenix Suns. Then the Phoenix Suns made fools of the Dallas Mavericks. It was come fun back for a little bit. <laughs> and then he had a fan thrown out for telling him to get on a treadmill, which if you ask me on a scale of one to a hundred, how you know out of line is that? That's like a one. That's about a one, maybe a one and a half, a very mild fan taunt. And he had him thrown off. To me, that is Karen behavior, but it's not the only one. I have a top. I have to. Def- I have to defend Luca before we move on. Oh come on! It was not the only thing said by the fan. Luca uh-huh. requested that the fan be talked uh-huh. to. He did not request for him to be ejected. There's all the all that. The fan did not actually get ejected. Just asked mm-hmm. to move his seat. Yeah. All that. I'll, I'll give okay. the math spiel. And all right, I'm done. All right, there it is. It's Karen behavior. I don't care what was happening. He asked to speak to the manager. I would the like manager to talk to your over. manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, number ten. Popovich telling fans to stop booing Kawhi oh, Leonard. That is a great one. You Very need- Karen behavior. Everybody quiet down <laughs> over here. Respect. Be nice. Respect. Number nine, Giannis getting upset about the Pacers stealing his ball. <laughs> just him this- bolting down the hallway is just an but- yeah. image I will remember forever. Furious. He said, I-, I felt the ball. I could tell. It didn't feel like the real ball. That's one of my favorite lines ever. And I'm telling you, this is a double Karen scenario because I think the Pacers were Karens for stealing the ball. <laughs> we have ourselves a double Karen moment. Maybe here. they were Chads. Maybe, maybe the Pacers yeah. were Chads. <laughs> Come on, Giannis was the Karen. Number eight, LeBron falling to the floor against the Celtics last year because he didn't get the call. Do you remember this? At the yes. end of the game, they missed a bad call. The referees lost a lot of sleepless nights for missing that call, if you recall. <laughs> but LeBron... He did a twirl. He did a run. He did yep. a hands to the sky. Yep. Then he fell to his knees. It was a Karen meltdown is very much a Karen move. That was, was a meltdown. I, was uh, it the same game that Patrick Beverly walked up with the camera? <laughs> hold, hold two choices here. Okay. No, it okay. was not. Okay. Um, Westbrook getting mad at the baby in the bubble. <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> yes. Oh the my baby God. was waving goodbye to him, and he was pissed. <laughs> Karen behavior from There's Westbrook. like 40 people at that game. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was a baby, and he was, was not amazing. having it. Number six. It's an amazing list. Ishbia <laughs> flops against Jokic yeah, in the playoffs. This is great. Yes. He steals the ball. He becomes the main character. Yoke comes over, gives him a little nudge. He falls. You've seen it. A lot of Karen videos feature major flopping from the Karen. <laughs> not he, he was not even like a, on a courtside seat. It was like a, a courtside, like adjacent seat. Like where he's, he's got the little bomber on. Like he's too old to be doing the bomber. He's wearing it. It's, it's it, it was a whole thing. Uh, number five, Westbrook throwing out a fan for calling him Westbrook. Westbrook, yeah. <laughs> Westbrook on this list twice, man. It's a tough, tough list here at the top. <laughs> Number four, yes, Patrick Beverly grabs the camera. <laughs> yeah. He shows the ref, I have video proof that you made the wrong call. That's a real Karen moment. When Are you, you filming go, me? Are you filming me? Do you have my consent to film me? <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly that. Did Number- you see the Westbrook? Did you see the Patrick Beverly thing from this weekend? <laughs> no, but did I miss one? So he apparently, so Wendell Carter Jr. was asked a question that was like, incendiary kind of like incendiary Uh and and like all the magic media people are like who is this guy that asked this question and then patrick beverly like starts talking about it on his podcast and going off on Wendell carter jr and then there's a conspiracy that patrick beverly planted the reporter that patrick beverly like brought his own reporter to ask Wendell carter jr a question so that then he could take it back to his podcast use it as content and come and come back right um number three we're in the top three here and this is tough oh Devin Booker mm. telling the ma- telling the referee that the mascot was distracting him <laughs> the in raptor. the bubble. The, ra- the raptor. And I love that the guy inside the raptor suit is like gives the look of like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> I have to go sit over here now? Like, as a, I'm a mascot. My job is to Didn't think things. Robin Lopez was here. Yeah. Uh, number two, Devin Booker complaining about <laughs> double teams. 
the double booker mention is just double booker in the top three very tough you it, the double I mean, team wasn't even an nba game <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it was so egregious i had to bring it to an nba game there was nba players on the court um no double teaming is an ultimate karen move to complain about double teaming in a pickup game and then number one with a bullet Chris Paul getting a technical foul for not having a telling the referee to give a technical foul because the <laughs> opponent did not have his jersey tucked in. That is the definition. Oh, is this... The definition of Karen behavior is getting a wow. technical. He literally went to the manager and was like, <laughs> let me speak to this guy because I have somebody over here without a shirt tucked in. They brought their own food into the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> They're chewing an, really an, loudly. An amazing list. Let us know in the comment section an NBA Karen moment that we missed. If there are oh, any honorable mentions sure we that we should them. have mentioned, and all of them, let us know in the comment section. Go check out Lockdown Nuggets. Go check out Lockdown Mavs five days a week. Great stuff on Lockdown Nuggets, uh, a team that wins basketball games. Check out Lockdown Mavs to hear about That's all the right. drama, all the drama, and all the trades that will happen eventually. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown NBA. Boom.